And Georgia Tech was like, nah, 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 nah. Your people don't get educated. So I got a feel good story for you all. So if you all joined my live yesterday, well, I was shortly on TikTok for a little bit before I actually went live streaming the game. But I was talking about with our, all of our um, our feeds filled with so much chaos. Because I don't know about your feed versus my own. I, well, I don't, know if you, <laughs> I don't know if you get into what I'm doing. Like, I, I get into a ton of activist stuff. And, of course, I'm out here um, making complaints against the things that are taking place overseas and, like, in the in the Middle East and stuff. And I'm not just I'm not calling the name. I'm just not calling the name. I'm Because I see smoke coming my way already on TikTok. Not even from people. Just, like, myself is just not getting views the way it used to. Because I'm like I'm being shadow banned. But anyway... I, I was my concern was that we're consuming so much anger because like it's just like when I wake up in the morning like I, I try not to watch the news I actually actually meditate before I do anything else and then when I'm making coffee and stuff I'll, I'll start tuning into like okay what's going on in the world what's going on in my local uh, city what's going on with the rest of this country and doing so you know it messes with your algorithm on social media to where you just get hit with so much chaos. Like, it's just, I mean, it's, it's just so much chaos everywhere. I mean, people are, and I'm gonna make a story on this because I'm gonna make an actual thing of talking about this, but people are, you know, protesting the Met Gala, which they always do. I mean, it's always something protesting the Met Gala. But I'm like, we need something. When do we take a break? Like, when do we actually pull away and take a break and secure our own mental health? Because if you, if you have so much, you know, chaos around you and you never take a chance to like breathe, it's not gonna do nothing but make you sick because you're gonna be mad all the time. And I actually talked to somebody about this because it was just like, it was, so, I mean, they were so angry, they was growling. And of course, they probably they got mental health issues. But I was like, why are you so angry? I'm like, I, I get that you might be upset behind stuff, like, but why is this, why does it have you feel with like so much rage that you like growling? Like, you just like, you, it's just really eating you up. And I think that's the problem that I see a lot of us have today. Like, we don't know how to disconnect. Like, we just, we, we get so sucked into it. We, we don't know how to separate ourselves from it. And it's sad because the people that's going through it, they do need help. Like, I mean, the people, I mean, you know, they got families getting killed. They got or under um, represented communities, you know, they're suffering from, uh, from, from not having enough funds in the community. They don't have enough schools. The uh, housing and stuff is bad. Housing is bad everywhere cost of living is extremely high so the, the income is not meeting up with how much the cost of living is going up and it's just so is i say that to say that it is just bad everywhere like realistically it's bad everywhere and when you have like this caring person caring spirit about you like i, I mean i have it about me it's like you really got to pull away sometimes to preserve your own mental state because it's just it's tragic and i, I get that those living in there they can't separate from that like they're actually in it in this but the person is not in it I mean, you gotta step away. As sad as it is, you have to pull away sometimes. And I'm and I'm bringing it all it up to say that I got a feel good story for you. Like I really got a feel good story for me. Y'all know me. Y'all know what I said. I'm always shouting out engineers. I got a feel good story for you because it actually put a smile on my face. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's going on, but it, this this one really did put a smile on my face. So one of the first black engineers who graduated from Georgia Tech, he presented his granddaughter with an engineering degree from Georgia Tech over 60 years later. And now that when I read this story, it almost put, uh, well, it technically almost did, you know, make me tear up and stuff. Because I got my two boys in college. One is going to Michigan State, and the other one is going to Savannah College of Art and Design here in um, the, in Atlanta. And I'm an engineer by trade. Like, I, my, my degree and stuff is in uh, computer science and uh, cyber security. But um, to see that, to see this, this, I mean, I would be, if I would have been in this audience, I would have been in there bawling my eyes out to see this, her, this, this grandfather present his granddaughter with her graduate degree, her master's degree from uh, Georgia Tech 60 years later. And he was the first black man to attend Georgia Tech. Yo, I would have been in there crying because it goes to show you. And I try not to always make stuff. I, I know y'all be like, man, cap. I try not to always make stuff about race all the time, but I don't, I mean, but we've experienced so much hate and so much trauma in this country, man. Like, it's, that's the thing, it's like, it's, there again, it is hard not to talk about the things that we've gone through and we continue to go through when it, like, when it continues to happen. And I try not to let it consume me sometimes because we're not the only one, we are suffering, but we aren't the only one suffering, which is why I, I, I kind of make stuff about politics a lot because I'm like, I don't understand how you could support a party, either party, when they're not doing anything to benefit your bottom line. And it's like, well, how do you do that? How do you support a party 
And I'm gonna put on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the the R side, the the, the REP side. When they're not doing anything to benefit you, it's always about projection. So it's projection anger of people coming across the border or, you know, uh, DEI taking place and they're being discriminatory towards other people. When it's like, okay, come on now, for real. And then affirmative action and it's always like abortions and you got to worry about LBGTQ and then you got to worry about socialism. And it's like, yo, for real? So I'm like, if it's so bad, cool. If it's bad for you and that's what you believe, at the end of the day, if that was for what you believe is for you, is for you. But if they're not doing nothing to help you out, <laughs> why are you supporting them? And that is my frustration because I was like, yo, everybody is suffering. Like, everybody is really suffering right now. Everybody is suffering right now. I don't care what race you are. Everybody is suffering right now. And that's why I'm like, it, it, it bewilders me. And I, I don't want to get on this huge rant because I think this is real good. It's, I'm just making up the, I'm just setting it up. I'm, I'm doing a layup. It's like, it's so much stuff, but you want, you'd rather hang on and, and big up a side that ain't really, that's, that's not doing anything for your bottom line outside of feeding into the rage and the anger, which is why I say that I generally cover and talk about a lot of stuff when it comes to the black community because it's stuff that hits home for me and stuff I know I personally had to deal with. Like when people say, oh, well, you know, it didn't really affect you. I was like, yeah, yeah it kind of did affect me being from the South. I'm like from the deep South too. It, it affected me and I had some stuff happen to me too. Even like my my family, my family, I got you know slaves in my my uh, my, my part of my ancestors. I mean, I grew up playing on one of the plant <laughs> on a plantation that my people, great great grandparents, actually worked on. They gave they end up giving some of the housing and stuff to you know my my family to live on. But we still living on the land that a lot of black people died on, and it was my family was. And then, so we would go visit them. They didn't have no dirt road. I mean, they had no dirt. They didn't have any. Paved roads, it was all still dirt roads, all the outhouses, everything was still out there. So I saw this stuff growing up. But anyway, so I say all to say, in stories like this, you hear what happened and you're glad to see that the world changed for the better part of it. So this institution, so we're going to start with the, the, the brother's name is Ronald Yancey. This is her grandfather. He was uh, the first, like I said, the first black engineer that graduated from Georgia Tech. This man applied to Georgia Tech and Georgia Tech was like, nah, 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 nah. Your people don't get educated. No, you gonna uh we 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 don't we don't want your kind even over here. Real talk. I mean they didn't say it like that, but you know, we you know, I'm I'm trying to make it. <laughs> they, so it's like they didn't want him coming there. So he ended up going to Morehouse. Ronald Yes ended up going to Morehouse, and he got his his degree in uh, math and physics. But even though me personally, I would have been like, "F it, you know, I'm I'm done." But this man really wanted to get a degree from Georgia Tech. I don't know why that was his thing. Because at the end of the day, as frustrated I would have been, and as sad as I would have been, I would have just been like, you know what, forget this. But this man was persistent about it. So he he went to he went to Morehouse, like I said, got his degree in math and physics. This man applied again, and he was ex finally accepted in 1962. But he had all these underlying conditions that he had to meet, which is wild when you hear this. He had to meet these underlying conditions to even maintain being a student at the school. So this man had to retake the SAT and then he had to attend a summer chemistry class. This dude, <laughs> this, this, see, I'm, I'm trying to make say the N word. This man already got a degree in math and physics. Like this man is already, he already got his bachelor's degree. Like he legitimately already got his bachelor's degree. You gonna make this man go back and retake the SAT? How disrespectful is that? Like real talk, how disrespectful is that? That's almost like somebody walking up and seeing your degree and tear the crap in front of you and somebody, this paper don't mean shit. I mean, they legitimately disrespected this man like that. So then once he was enrolled, they made extra demands on this man. So he did it. I mean, this man really wanted to go to Georgia Tech. He did it. But they made extra demands on him that they did not make to his white peers. Like he had to maintain a B average and he had to complete 18 exams during the final weeks of school. And then on top of that, too, yeah, my foot is itching. But then on top of that, too, he was warned not to take public transportation or attend any of the school's athletic events just for his own safety and concerns. Because, again, they didn't want him there. They did not want him there. 
But he eventually graduated with his electrical engineering degree in 1965, making him the very first black man of the 300 students in his graduating class. So they eventually dedicated, I don't know why the hell it took them so long to do this either. Now I will say this, I don't know why, and I love Georgia Tech. I, this, I didn't even notice, but I do love Georgia Tech. They uh, eventually, cause I plan on going back to get another degree or probably get another master's degree at Tech because I love the school. So I know you'll be like, why the hell are you going back there again? I didn't go, I wanted, I've always wanted to go. I didn't go. I, I just, I mean, my parents didn't have the money for even for me to do that. And then at the time, too, I didn't have the grades to do it either because it, I just didn't have the grades to do it to get there. So, yeah, I, it, yeah. So anyway, yeah, I'm gonna say this too. Be saying I didn't have the grades. Um, I had eighty. I had ADD when I was in school, which I didn't realize I had that until I was in college. And I had to go. I mean, I really got treated for it too. I had to take medication to, to get treated, just to even graduate, uh, come out of college. So I had it throughout school, throughout elementary school and throughout high school because it's one of those things where if you have ADHD now you understand that it's hard for you to stay focused like it's hard for you to stay focused my when I was trying to read and stuff I was playing what well, Mario didn't exist back then I'm gonna just use that as, as a metaphor I was playing Mario in my head like my mind was always somewhere else as opposed to being directly onto my studies so um but yeah so that I mean that's why I really didn't have a, I mean I graduated high school and I did well I mean some classes I really like I enjoy history and stuff but I still didn't graduate with a high enough, a great point average to be able, if I want to go to Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech I probably wouldn't have been, in, been able to get into it, but I can now. I mean, I got my stuff now. I mean, <laughs> I, I got my stuff now. But they finally dedicated a sculpture to this man in 2019. So it was, it, it, it lets you know how far they have come because Georgia Tech is a phenomenal school right now. I, I'm not even going to cap on that. I understand they had some racial issues. They were dealing with a lot of schools and institutions that's been around for a long time, such as Harvard, Stanford, all these other people. They had racial things they had to deal with. Some of them still racist. I mean, they still got them, under, them undertones, but they still, they, they've, they've improved. But to see how they've come along now, they have a very diverse group of students there. They do a lot of stuff in the community. They have a lot of summer programs. They encourage youth and stuff to, to get back into My wife even got a certificate doing um, front end, back end development there, like a full set, full set development certification there. And uh, so it's, it's a really good, it's a really good school, man. It's a, it's a really good school. Georgia is doing a good, great job of rebranding itself with a lot of our institutions that's here. I, I will say that much. I mean, it's, I'm not going to sit here and say that we don't have, still have any racial problems still out here, but I, I will, I will pre, preface it as they have made a lot of improvements and across the board, I'm happy with my state. We can do a lot better, especially in some of the rural areas, but as far as when it comes into like the cities and our institutions, we are doing a whole lot better. So I can give kudos and shout outs to the new presidents they have there, the new board of directors they have at those institutions. They have done a phenomenal job in turning things back around. So to see this come back full circle and his granddaughter, Deanna Yancey, she got her master's from Penn State. I mean, I heard she got her degree from Penn State in, in engineering. And she finally went back. She went to Georgia Tech and took uh, Georgia Tech online. And she uh, completed her master's degree there. And she came down to actually walk across the stage. And man, this is where I, like, I would have teared up. They had her grandfather. He presented the, her degree to her to symbolize like a, um, a rite of passage to her. And I'm like, that is one of the sweetest things to just to see that your grandfather was one of the first ones there. To know that he was one of the first ones there, and then to have him actually be there to present you with a degree, and not the actual president or the vice president. I'm sure the vice president probably handed her the paper, but he gave her the actual degree and be on stage to celebrate her greatness. That is a feel good story that I actually needed right now because it's like I said, my my feed is full of so much so much chaos, but. I'm happy for her. I'm glad to see that they got another engineer in the family. I don't know what her dad was doing. They didn't, in an article, they didn't mention her dad and what he does. But for her to be, for him to be, to come back around and see his and be around and see his granddaughter go to the institution that he worked so hard to get into, and they didn't want him there, and he survived those four years there. I I mean that's that's I'm happy for them and I'm happy for their family. So. You know, I, I like to see this stuff going forward. I'm going to cry at my son's graduation because I know what I had to do to get my boys through, uh, to, through high school, through middle school and high school. I'm mean, not to say they were bad. My kids did great in school. And it's because I knew what I had to deal with and I knew uh, mental wise what I had to deal with. And I made sure that my boys were set up with the best way possible. 
They graduated high school with honors, and I, they're gonna do the same thing coming out of college. Both of my boys, my oldest son, I think he has like a three point, a three point, three point nine GPA in our college right now. I think my youngest, my son has, my youngest son, he has the same thing too. And both of them be graduating. My the oldest will be graduating this fall, the other one will be graduating winter quarter of next year. So I'm happy for the both of them. And I'm, as a parent, man, it's got to make you proud. And as a grandfather, I'm sure, as a grandfather, I'm sure, as a grandparent, I'm sure it make you proud as well too to see your kids be, do successful in life and not get caught up in some of the stuff that people get distracted with in this world. So that's it for this uh, one episode. I just want to put the feel good story out there. This don't necessarily line up with my typical conversations or what I generally talk about, but. I want to add it to my feed, man, because I love seeing stuff like this. I love seeing things where, you know, the family, I don't know telling what that family had to go through when that man was uh, going through, especially when he was going to Morehouse. And, you know, you have that one place you want to go to or one place you want to work at. And, you know, without a shadow of a doubt that the reason they're not getting, letting you in is because of race or discrimination. I don't care if you're a man. I don't care if you're a woman or you're not getting that promotion because they don't want to see you up there again i don't care if you're a man and you're a woman women have gone through this too all women have gone through this too i'm not just saying about black people all women have gone through this too where you knew you was deserving of something or you knew you were deserving of the extra pay and you was being blocked because of old school prejudices that's, that exist in this world still to this day so to have this come out i love it i love it so thank y'all tuning in i'm gonna do some more um uh streaming tonight but thank y'all for tuning in for this episode Plan on talk. I am going to send a put. So you're going to give two multiple episodes a day. I plan on talking about the whole Drake thing. And again, talking about, you know, the feel good stuff versus in the midst of the chaos taking place around the world. But I wanted to put this out there really quick because, like I said, I, it's a feel good story. So thank y'all for, like I said, thank y'all for tuning in to this, uh, this episode. Make sure y'all turn on y'all the notification bells. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Cause I mean, I like doing this stuff. I mean, I, I talk about, I, you, I see me play video games. You, probably, you sometimes might see me play games more so than everything else. And that's because of what I started off with early on. It's like, man, I see so much stuff. I don't want to talk about, I didn't, this ain't no news channel like that. I don't want to just talk about all the chaos every day. Cause it gets to be depressing. So, but, but if you like the content, it's very diverse here subscribe to the channel at least you can do a subscribe to the channel you're gonna get some laughs you're gonna get some anger sometimes from my frustration with some of how we doing things especially politically but then you will have some feel good stuff too with video games and me presenting stories like this or with the excitement of new technology coming out because i'm gonna talk about apple's the wwdc event and then the last event they came out with the new ipads and new m4 chips that they put inside of the new ipads and then talk about google's io that is getting to come up next week too so and I'm gonna do a, a review on my my car on 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 EVs, but uh, yeah, turn on. But, but you won't hear about it if you don't turn on your notification bells to be notified of when the episodes are are published, and you won't know about it if you're not subscribed to the channel. I try to be a very diverse channel. I don't see too many channels like me where I do a lot of community service work, and it's not gonna be a rant. It's just tell them my qualifications. I I have experience in everything that I talk about. It's not just an opinion based stuff. It's experience that I've actually worked and I lived in, and I still live and work in to this day. So. Yeah, turn on your sub subscribe to the channel, please. Please leave a comment down below how you feel about this. How was school for you? Did you go to the institution that you wanted to go through? If you didn't, like, what was the challenges that you faced? Is it why you couldn't get into it? Was it personal or was it because you saw something happening with the school itself? And also, if you ever thought about getting into content creation and doing a podcast, I do have a book out. The Ultimate Technical Guide to Creating a Podcast. It is out right now. It is a digital copy available right now. A physical copy will be coming out in the next couple of weeks. It is on my website, ptgtv.online. That's ptgtv.online. It's in my, my About Me section. It's also available on Amazon. It's also available on Apple iBooks. And it's all of, also available on Google Books. It's a digital copy. Go check it out if you think about talking about getting into, 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 into content creation or creating a podcast. I can't, can't talk today. Into creating a podcast. And it goes from, from beginning to the very end on this content creation. So, y'all check that out. It's only, you know, it's, it's not that the price is not even that much. And But if you get it from, directly from my website, if you go through the book, you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me. Because I've been doing podcasts and stuff for like four years now. And I've met with a lot of people, industry people, from IP lawyers to other lawyers to people to help you um, get monetized. Lots of I'm still working on myself, but I still have the information that's been given to me. So, um, yeah, get the book, man. Get it from my website. You know, you get that one-on-one. -on -one, you get that one-on-one, -on -one, free one-on-one -on -one time with me to go over whatever you have a question with. And like I said, it's available on my website, online. Until the next time, 
Y'all be safe out there. Love you all. Peace out.